not too long ago, I made a vlog about the Flexera State of the Cloud Report of 2020. I'm gonna link it up here. And just recently they released the 2021 report. And so I wanted to make one episode to talk about the differences. So I made some notes, notes, not noise, notes to guide you through it. So there were a few in the highlights section already surprises to me. And one of the surprises was that Amongst enterprise companies, those are companies larger than 1,000 in that survey, that the number of them that have a hybrid cloud or multi-cloud strategy have decreased very slightly. Multi-cloud has decreased by 1% to 92, and hybrid cloud strategy has reduced by 7 points to 80. So based on the 2021 numbers and respondents, 92% of enterprise have a multi-cloud strategy, and 80% of them have a hybrid cloud strategy, which Gartner, I think the last number I remember is still above 90%. The biggest move that I have seen change was from 59% up to 90. And these were the questions if they believe that cloud usage will exceed of what is planned. And so given the pandemic now 90% or pretty much everybody that responded said that the cloud usage will exceed of what they have planned. There was a light decrease in number of enterprise who say that optimization of cloud costs is a top priority. So last year, 73% of enterprise have said that cloud cost optimization is a top priority and this has been now down to 60%, which is, I guess, the, it's not a top priority anymore because right now they just had to make it to work during the pandemic with remote work and all the other challenges that they had. What also has gone down by 2% to 59 is organizations that focus on cloud. Organizations, again, is both enterprise and SMB, so all the respondents. So there was a slightly reduce of that. What went up by 4%, uh, by four points, is that now 77% of enterprise customers have a central center of excellence or cloud unit that helps the company with cloud adoption. And also positively to see by 12 points increase is enterprise who use MSPs. MSPs stand for managed service providers that help them with those cloud workloads. When we look at what have been the top challenges last year in 2020, those have decreased across the board slightly. So for example, security has gone down by two points to 81%. Cloud spend has gone down by three points to 79% and governance is down four points to 75%. So meaning companies still struggle. It's still top of the challenges around security, governance and cloud spend but it has decreased overall, which I think is a reflection that many cloud providers have heavily invested in readiness material and trainings to help customer in these areas. What stayed completely unchanged, uh, which was worth to highlight, is still 30% of all the people that responded to it think that 30% of the cloud spend that they have is waste for things that they don't need that could be underutilized resources, etc. And as you can see in the original episode where I covered this lengthy, that companies do not take advantage of the tools at their disposal. Now let's dive into some of the other statistics that have changed. A big difference also has been in the number of the respondents that are in the SMB segment versus enterprise. If we look at this statistic, SMB have shrunk to 15% from the 26% and the rest of the respondents have been enterprise. When we look at the percentage of how many say they're advanced versus beginner under intermediate, then we see that advanced definitely has grown. I think this was a little bit forced given the pandemic, they had to learn really quickly, basically hit the ground running, so to speak. Cloud spend management tools or cost management tools went slightly up. You see this from 33 to 42%, which is surprisingly because overall cost optimization as a priority went down, but the usage of the tool went up. But then the, what I would call almost the more important ones like security tools has a slight increase. That's positive to see, but then cloud management and cloud governance tools, surprisingly not. And just given that still over 90% have a multi-cloud strategy, I would like to see this number much, much higher. When we look at the workloads in the public cloud, I thought this was uh, quite interesting. 
Last year the headline over this graphic was like almost 50% of our clothes are in the cloud. Now this year it is 50% as you can see, but surprisingly almost unchanged was data in the public cloud. So they said more workloads move, but not necessarily data. Data grew from 45 to 46 year over year. And when we look at the top cloud initiatives like last year versus this year, we see that cost savings is still on the top, even though we know it's slightly decreased, then it followed by migration. But then you see better financial reporting on cloud cost versus expand the use of containers. So cost, even though they say less of a priority, moved up here quite a little bit. And I thought that again surprising with given of what the highlight is as far as cost management goes. Metrics on how do you use the success of cloud usage, etc. Last time I made a little bit fun of about the value delivered to business units. I said I'd like to see that. That has been replaced by cost avoidance as an example. So cost efficiency, cost avoidance in the top three. You have the delivery speed of product and services, which stays basically unchanged. But then you see going down its number of workloads migrated increase in competitive advantage, which last time was almost at the bottom of the list. So that made a massive jump this year. When we look at what's the role of central IT in the cloud adoption in enterprise, then you see originally it was manage optimized cost, and now it's decide advice on apps appropriate for cloud and then manage. So that has swapped. So where last year first is like, help it manage and optimize it. And now it's like, what can we move out during the pandemic? There again, the huge increase that we see there. Policies to optimize cloud costs. When we look shut down workloads after hours, that went slightly down. And I guess people also worked a little bit more. I know at least at Microsoft, this was the case, many other industries. And so I guess there wasn't really a need to kind of like shut it down. That was interesting to see. This surprised me a lot in container tools used. You see Docker, Kubernetes, AWS, and now it's Docker, AWS, and then Kubernetes. So AWS has overtaken Kubernetes. As far as the survey goes, Azure Container Service stays unchanged, or at least in the order. This one was last year a big surprise because I had overall heard more questions from Terraform than Ansible in general in my position at Microsoft, but I'm not in the open source team. So they may have had way more questions around Ansible than Terraform, but in my role was Terraform and seeing now this year Terraform being on top place, kind of like is what I expected already last year. Then when we look at cloud adoption, public cloud adoption year over year, you will see Azure made a huge jump, AWS slightly changed one percentage point, Azure jumped from 63 to 73, and then obviously Google Cloud, etc. Oracle also had a big jump um, overall in growth over this year. Then public services uh, used in the cloud. Last time it was, um, it was around database as a service, relational, and now it's data warehouse and then it's the database as a service. So that has swapped and container has moved down to the third place. That also a big change over last year. And then when we look at private cloud adoption, we see lucky us, Microsoft Azure Stack is unchanged. Even the percentages went slightly down in experimenting from 21% to 20 and 11% that plan to use it. So exciting to see, exciting time, minor changes, but here are the difference. I hope you liked it. I hope it was insightful. If you have questions, leave it in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Click on the little bell so you get notified when I post the next video. And with that, the Dave Kurt out.